is Charlemagne the God on The Breakfast Club. So, I mentioned beforehand on another episode of The Random Show, there was an episode where I played a clip from Brian Callen, where he's sitting in a car somewhere and he's ranting and raving about who he thinks will win between. Yo, big up, uh, Burp Reynolds. AZ Squad. AZ Nation. Yes, Wagwan. Appreciate you. You guys are not going to stop with this fucking AZ Nation thing, are you? Fucking no. You're not going to stop. But anyway, big up everybody. Appreciate you. We're not going to run with that AZ Nation shit. I fucking hate it. But I appreciate all of you for the love. Thank you so much, Burp Reynolds. Appreciate you so much, brother. Um, I played a clip of Brent, of Brian Callan, who was screaming into his fucking iPhone while sitting in his Tesla somewhere on a warm sunny day when he should be really with his fucking friends and family looking after his kids who are just born, by the way. He has two kids probably under the age of three years old they should be looking after. He was in his car ranting and raving about who would win between Logan Paul, um, or sorry, or Jake Paul and fucking Mike Tyson. Now we don't, doesn't really matter because the fight has been postponed because of Mike Tyson's health or something. Anyway, long story short, I said when I watched that video, why doesn't Brian just give up? And I think some people kind of saw it or kind of heard me say that and thought I was being flippant, thought I was being rude, thought I was being mean. But I honestly do think because I've had to wrestle and reconcile and think about that myself when it comes to my raving career, raving lifestyle, my DJ thing, and just think, you know what, maybe actually taking some time away or stepping away for something or quitting something and putting more resources in another thing is actually a good thing, especially when you decide to step away. The worst thing possible for you to do is to get chucked out of a party. It's best for you to leave the party with all your fucking, you know, with all your senses in, in order without being sloppy and without fucking landing on your ass somewhere in the gutter. But I feel like with these podcasters, these comedy guys, they don't have any ability to just quit while they're ahead. They just want to run it run it to the fucking ground and i feel like with brian cannon especially he's a special case because he started with rogan in the beginning he went through that whole period of enjoying the fucking heydays of la he had all that amazing moment in the sun with the fucking peak days of fucking fire and the kid he got cancelled for a very serious rape allegation and then came back to fire and the kid and still was able to pod still was able to tour doing stand-up comedy that should be enough Shouldn't you be able to just give up and stop trying to be viral online and be like a, a voice that people want to hear from and try to be relevant? Shouldn't that be the last thing on your mind? Shouldn't, shouldn't you be okay with just podcasting and doing stand-up instead of trying to record videos or you're trying to viral bait? Shouldn't you? But the reason why I say that is because Charlemagne the God, of all people who's experienced all types of success over the last few years, he, even he is considering when he's going to quit the, the, the Breakfast Club. Even he is considering it. So if Charlemagne could consider quitting one thing to pursue other things or go into a whole new other chapter of his life why can't brian kellen uh, uh, chapter nine in your book before we leave yes can i do one question before yes please how many more years of the breakfast club oh the hard hit questions. questions i don't know i mean you really don't know like you die you how many more years you want to do uh i got a number i definitely i i, I personally have a number but it's just it's not even just Breakfast Club is just um, being being talent. Period. Is that a financial number? Or is that a year? No, 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 no. It's not a financial number. It's just like I, I like I like I like being behind the scenes a lot more mm. nowadays. I remember you telling me that at MSG, mm -hmm. and that was interesting. Is that what you see yourself transitioning to after you get out? Is just. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing that now. Like, I mean, I, I'm... I, like full-time. Yeah, I'm executive producing. I'm, I got my own book imprint where we putting out other people's books. You got me and Kevin Hart got the company SBH Productions with Audible. We're executive producing mm. all of that. Audio scripted content that's going to turn into documentaries and movies and stuff in the future. I'm getting in the movie game in a real a real way yeah, like that what was that movie you did um 88, 88. That, yeah that's a political that thriller but i really i got great. i got another movie play that that's going what, what do you like talk about that uh, not yet what, what do you like more about being behind the scenes empowering other people mm -hmm. watching other people get their shit off watching mm -hmm. watching other people become you know these great entities that people so you enjoy watching love and fuck with i love that yeah now don't get me wrong don't get me wrong Charlemagne is obviously a huge name, a huge star, and has way more branding, marketing, earning potential power than the brand Callen does. Fair play. But there has to come a point when you're those type of people, when you're around the JRE verse, when you're around the BAPA verse, there has to be an end point. There has to be a point where you feel like, okay, I've done enough, I've said enough, I want to pull, I want to either pull back a bit 
whereas maybe you stop doing pods and you just do stand-up that's also possible or you just stop being a social media figure like in that way where you're putting up clips and you're trying to get yourself viral on tiktok you're trying to go viral on ig reels you're trying to do all the stuff that people are doing when they're coming up you're now trying to do when you're 60 brian's like 60 maybe approaching 70 soon and you're still trying to be relevant you're still trying to compete with like matt rife and shit you have to you have to be okay with giving up and moving on to other things now don't get me wrong brian callen probably doesn't have a lot of things to move on to too that might be another thing but there should be something in your mind, in your brain, in the way you move that should tell you, oh, I want to have a timeout. Because you can't tell with these guys. There's nothing that tells me from Brian Callen or Brendan how they act and how they do their pods. You don't get any semblance of an indication that they have an exit plan. I don't think either of them have an I don't think either of them know what they're going to do. If Podcast One goes belly up, which is possible considering the fucking stock price, if Podcast One was to go belly up, and they were to find it extremely difficult to find another podcast um, sponsorship partner, person, company that could give them the same, you know, um, beneficial, advantageous, very one-sided splits that they are kind of fortune enough to have with Podcast One. If that was to all go away, if that was to all go away, I don't think they'd have any idea on what they would do because the AdSense couldn't look after them. He, we've seen all the view stats numbers on the fire and the kid that people have been sharing there's no way they could sustain keeping that studio open and paying everybody with the adsense money that they get so they rely a lot on fucking sponsorship so if sponsorship goes away if they're suddenly not relevant enough to or suddenly not worthy enough of getting those deals or whatever it may be they have i don't think they have an exit plan i really don't think they have an exit plan and that's a scary thing because these guys have been around for ages bro They've been around at the beginning of the podcast boom. Brian has been around probably before the beginning of the podcast boom. He was streaming with fucking Rogan when Rogan was streaming on Justin.tv. You know, like he's been there from the day dot. He doesn't have his own podcast that's really blowing up, really, with the exception of this new YouTube channel that Brian Callan's got that's doing some numbers. But all these years, he doesn't have a podcast as big as Rogan's. He's never had a special on a major streaming platform. And he's hitched his entire career on the fucking wagon of Brendan Shaw, who's a failing stock at the moment. Why don't they have exit plans? Why isn't there ever an, a route out? Why isn't there a, 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 an option to just quit? Or to just pause why does it always have to just continue until they fucking drive the fucking bus into the ground it's so bizarre to me again Charlemagne isn't the best option isn't the best example i know he's super successful he's got his own niche he's a black guy blah 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 he's got radio i get it but even he's considering quitting one of the most successful radio shows in fucking recent history in the breakfast club even though the breakfast cover is probably going to come to its end as well you got you know dj envy has his uh, looming case with that flipping houses thing going on angela Yee left this new girl probably isn't putting up as much numbers as angela Yee was the breakfast club isn't what it once was the interviews don't garner the same amount of reception or notoriety or virality they did in the past i understand that but even if that's the case Charlemagne, if he wanted to could easily earn a good living from breakfast club just turning up and doing a job they're fucking you know they're fucking um all over the country anyway as it is he doesn't need to quit it but even he's considering you know what maybe i have said enough maybe i have given enough of my hot takes on radio every day maybe i don't need to do this until the end of time maybe taking a step back maybe quitting before i'm fired because my numbers are not where they used to be might be the most graceful way to go out of it but these comedians there is never an end point it's just keep on going until the fucking wheels fall off i don't fucking get it no, I don't, Andrew. <laughs> I feel a Diddy joke. I feel it. What, what, I, can I feel never said. I just said you enjoy watching. <laughs> Wait, what do you feel? I know. What do you say? He felt Diddy like. What do you feel? What do you feel, man? So. <laughs> Guys, this has been flagrant. Make sure you go out and get get honest and die line. Charlemagne's third fast. book. Oh. Go get it right now. We love you, brother. We appreciate too, you. Man. Thank you so much for all the game yes, over the But to be fair to Brendan and Brian, it must be kind of gut wrenching to see what's going on, especially if you're Brian. You came into podcasting or stand up way earlier before Schultzy. These guys are experiencing a level of success that Brendan and Brian have probably never experienced. They probably, Brendan and Brian probably got the rub of the podcasting, but when it comes to stand up, when it comes to money, when it comes to exposure, when it comes to fame, these newer guys, 
the Schultz, the Shane Gillis generation of comedians, they're experiencing the fruits that these guys have never experienced. That's probably why Brian was like nearly having a breakdown when he saw the whole like, you know, roast of of Tom Brady, Netflix is a joke stuff and he wasn't invited because it's like he was been, they've been LA, they've been Abbott Kenny, they've been fucking downtown LA, they've been in, they've been in Hollywood adjacent from the get go and they have never experienced what these guys have experienced and they do the same thing on paper on paper they all sit in front of shore microphones they all sit in front of slrs they all sit in front of red cameras light boxes ring lights spotlights they all do the exact same thing they upload on youtube they upload on spotify apple technically they do the same thing but the fruits the rewards are not the same